When you're pricing your services, remember that most Americans are not poor, they're broke. And they're broke because they don't have good money management skills. Hi everyone, it's Tina with Picture It Personal Finance, where I ask you to picture your goal, plan to achieve it, and enjoy your success. Today is a video about business, and that it is noble and that you should charge accordingly. This is going to be part of my setting up shop series, but really what this video is about is something that I have personally struggled with as a personal finance coach and why I have stuck with beta clients for far too long because there is a part of me that feels this notion of what is the right thing to charge people and is it appropriate to charge people who are having difficulties with money to teach them how to be better with money? It's something that one of my very first beta clients asked me and they essentially said, how are you going to charge people in good conscience knowing that they don't have money? And I have, that question was raised years ago. Let me start by saying that. And I have pondered it for literally years and I have finally come to a conclusion or come to a realization that is helping me. And I want to share that with you guys. So before I dig into that, let me start by saying, I got a story for you. It's story time, people. The story has nothing to do with business. I'll start by saying that it actually has to do a bit more with fun money and toys. So the story is this, my husband is super into outdoorsy type sports. He likes junk trucks, he likes dirt bikes, he likes camping, and frankly, I'm right there with him for about half of it. <laughs> um, that being said, I do support his love for these things. And a little while ago, maybe a week and a half ago, he found a junk truck on Facebook Marketplace that had completely caught his eye. It was a Toyota 4Runner that was very much so like his very first 4Runner that he owned or Toyota vehicle that he owned and he loved that SUV so much. He ended up selling it and getting a truck because he really wanted to have something that could transport his dirt bikes more easily without having to always haul a trailer. So he let that 4Runner go and got himself a Tundra that he does thoroughly love as well. That being said, this Forerunner shows up. It's exactly like the one he used to have, except for it's completely done up for that junk truck type stuff. And I'm, I'm like I said, I don't totally get into all the stuff that he gets into, so I can't speak to it very articulately, but I know it had a lift kit. I know it had a, a tow on it and certain bumpers on it and was set up in a way where it could really go into terrain that a typical vehicle would have difficulty going into. The guy selling it was selling it for $10,000. We have that as part of our savings and it is part of our discretionary savings. So I had told him, listen, if you really wanna make an offer on this, go ahead and make an offer, but don't give him asking, you know, like negotiate with the guy. And my husband said, I can't in good conscience, I can't sell it for, I can't offer less than 10,000 for it because I know that with everything he's put into it, he's probably spent $20,000, but I don't want to spend $10,000. So I had said to him, listen, the guy messaged you and said, hey, I'm in a desperate way for money. I really want to sell this. Will you buy this from me? He's in a desperate way. Even though you feel bad that you're lowballing him, if you feel good about the amount of money that you're going to spend and he feels good accepting it because he's in a desperate position, then you've added value. You've done the right thing. You didn't screw this man out of this magnificent vehicle. He put himself in a position where he needs cash. You have cash. You could make this transaction work. You could get a junk truck you really want and he can have money to take care of whatever financial situation he has going on. If you both come to agreement on it, it's a fair deal. And a person who's in desperate need to sell something is going to be willing to take less. And I'm not saying you should gouge a person like this, but in your conscience, if you know that, hey, I'm comfortable spending 8,500, then offer 8,500 and know that that person will probably be thrilled. 
my husband, no, he couldn't do it. He was like, I can't do it. I can't in good conscience do it. I don't want to spend 10,000, but I feel guilty offering him 8,500. And I said, you know, if you feel guilty about it, then don't do it. But the decision's yours. Two and a half weeks later, not even, a week and a half later, it's like today, it's this converse, this next part of the story happened two nights ago. He tells me that he saw that the junk truck got reduced to 7,500 and my husband's friend went and bought it. My husband's like, I can't believe my friend got it. I wanted it so bad. I can't believe that he took it. And for 7,500, and I said, and you know what the saddest part is? You were willing to spend 8,500. That guy just lost $1,000 because you felt guilty offering something that he would have gladly taken. So the moral of the story is the agreement, if the transaction is sufficient for both sides, then it will be a good thing. It will be a noble thing. Both parties will have gotten value out of it. Don't talk yourself out of doing what you know is right and what you know you're worth because you're afraid of how it'll be perceived. Okay, so now bringing it back to the business. For Picture It Personal Finance, I have been researching like crazy what other coaches are um, pricing their services at. Some of them I think, holy smokes, they can get away with charging that much. It just kind of blows my mind. And then other ones I think, gosh, that's really not very much at all. Like that hourly rate seems really small considering all the prep work you have to do and the written recommendations and the source for, you know, uh, preparing resources and preparing worksheets and all the materials that you have to produce in order to really deliver a solid recommendation and exercises to your clients. That seems awfully low. So for example, um, let's say I want to charge uh, $500 for my program. And I'm just using this as a ballpark number. This isn't actually my pricing. But let's say I want to charge $500 for my program. Some people might say, wow, that's an awful lot to charge for your program. And yet, through my program, I'm going to teach people how to pay off debt in a accelerated way. And they're going to end up saving, by the end of three years, $5,000 in interest. So is really charging $500 for my program that bad of a deal when in exchange you're going to receive $5,000 in value? Absolutely not. It makes perfect sense that you would charge $500 or possibly even more. It just depends on what you're teaching people and how that's going to affect their ability to make or save money in the future. And I guess that's what I'm getting at with this story and with what I'm saying now in terms of setting up your business. Understand the value for your client. Don't understand the value just for you. Don't price things in accordance with what you feel is right. Don't price things in accordance with what you think a fair hourly rate is. Price it in accordance with value. So it got me thinking, especially with the story of the, of the junk truck. That guy could have gotten more money had my husband made the offer. The value would have been greater for him, even though my husband didn't feel that way. When you price according to your feelings, you're probably going to be letting money sit on the table. You don't know how other people value things. You don't know what their needs are. You don't know what their desperation level is. You don't know what their income level is. I mean, at the beginning of a coaching relationship, you will get a better sense of that, but things will unfold. The story will evolve. You will help them into making more money. You will give them side hustle ideas. You will probably to some degree give them a different way of thinking about money that in the end will save them tremendously, um, save them a lot of, tr save them a tremendous amount of money. The bottom line is this, when you're pricing your services, remember that most Americans are not poor, they're broke. And they're broke because they don't have good money management skills or they have emotional um, triggers that are causing them to spend money outside of or in a way that is not in balance with what their income truly affords them. Knowing that, knowing that you can teach them how to spend appropriately, knowing that you can teach them how to save a boatload of money on debt interest, knowing that you can teach them how to save properly so that they can have a comfortable retirement and not have to be a burden on their children. These are things that are hugely valuable in life and you should price according to that, not according to what you think is a fair hourly rate. Probably, I'm telling you something you know already, but for me, it was an epiphany that really came out of the whole junk truck story, and I'm so grateful for it. 
Anyway, that's all I have to say for today. I know that's kind of more a philosophical discussion and not as much a practical discussion, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And if you did like the video, please hit that like button. If not, um, leave a comment. Tell me what you really think. I will talk to y'all in the next video. Bye.